Uh, let's go over, go over six on five. Well, I don't know how many years it took me to figure this out, but this this whole concept of space, creating space on six on five, and to me, this is the this is the main reason why we why we don't score more than I mean, average. A lot of teams uh, are, are thirty thirty percent, about a third of the time, you score on six on five. I, did I tell you about the uh, women in China and U.S. and Australia? No, I don't think I did. Uh, the last tournament that USA Women's played in, uh, the final four, uh, it was qualifying for the World League. The final four were China, US, Canada, and Australia. Women's side, four really good teams. So they, they had the final four, and they went, um, like, uh, the semifinals was two of those four. So, and then the other semifinals was the other two. And uh, uh, my friend Ricardo is coaching the Chinese women. Uh, after the game, they lost the game by one goal or something like that. And uh, so he, his statement to the press was, well, you know, win or lose the game, he said, uh, we were concentrating on drawing exclusions at two meters. We were really concentrating on our two meter game. And we drew 12 exclusions. And then he kind of left it at that, you know, and said, we're trying to draw as many exclusions as we can during the game. So then I looked at the stats. They scored one goal out of 12 exclusions, you know. I would play so then the next game is this, uh, they're playing for third place, uh, and they drew 11 exclusions. So at the end of that press conference, they said, well, every game we played, we, we averaged drawing 12 exclusions. And I'm looking at the stats on that game, 11 exclusions, one, one uh, goal. So then I look at the other games between those top four, right? And that's four different games. There were 76 exclusions, seven goals scored. This is, U this is USA, USA, China, Canada, and Australia. Seven out of seven. That's like, I, I think I divided it's 10.4%. You know, so, so, you know, trying to, yes? Yeah, I have a question um, just about, like, just because you have, like, a movement style offense and about drawing exclusions, because I guess they're banking on exclusions coming from two meter. Um, when I was playing, I, I got, like, really crappy on drawing exclusions. I guess on drives I'm asking or? like all the coaches that you um, on drives. Yeah. So I got really crafty at that. Um, I guess that plays more into the officials hands than anything. Because I, I try to coach my my especially my girls. Yeah. My guys too. Um, the girls are a little more grabby. So you know I try to coach them and draw an exclusions from right. movement. Yeah. Well know, that's gonna necessary. happen if you if you run a movement system, you're gonna get more okay. from that. And and it, uh, you're gonna get them on the counter attack too. Uh, so you're going to draw exclusions in the counter. You're going to draw them on drives. You're not going to probably get as many at two meters, but you know you're still going to have people posting up. And even if you're a, a driver and you drive in and you post up, you're still in position to draw an exclusion when you post up. Because technically you're between the goal posts and you're in front of the goal. That should be an exclusion. So it's, and and the big thing is the referees have to be willing to call. Yeah, that's the, the exclusion. That's the question I was getting ready right to ask. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> the thing that I've seen a lot of. Referees aren't willing to call next, like the ball's at five, there's a drive from two. Yeah. Even though there's holding on that drive, they're not willing to call that exclusion. Yeah. And that's, I think that's what that's what right. and, and that's seen that the, the rule that uh, the two handed hold rule is supposed to, uh, hopefully, the help is supposed to help. So yeah, we've, if, seen, we've seen that being called inconsistently. There are some, you know, there's some games where the, they will call it, and then there's some where it just seems like well, they just don't want to. Do you know what I tell my players back when we were in the driving game? Uh, <clears throat> You have to show the ref that you're being him yeah. without getting called for an offensive foul. That's why I showed you that technique where you put egg beater up. And uh, if if you just sit there and let somebody hold you, I mean you can't take a stroke. You can't try to swim over them if they're holding you. you. But you have to you have to show the ref that you're being fouled, or else he's not going to make the call. You know. And if if, I, if I'm sitting there and somebody's holding me underwater like this, I mean I'm the referee. I, I don't know. If because the person's not struggling, not doing, and referees are pretty good about helping out people who are struggling. You know, so it's like an outside foul where you just you barely have to struggle when you get the call. One thing so, that I've told my kids is you're going to have to have three exclusions before you get one. Yeah. Basically, what it boils down to, because that's how bad you're going to be holding the foul, just to keep the their momentum into right. uh, being arrested. So I, I've 
you know, I'm look, I, I see a lot of games. I've seen a lot of games in the last 12 years where I wasn't coaching. And uh, you see a lot of one for 10, one for 11, one for seven, <laughs> two for 12, you know. And it's just not a high percentage. It's not, and well, why, the heck, why can't we score more? We've got an extra person. And then I started looking at pictures of videos, but I'd stop the video and I'd look. And I, and I just, like I showed you the other day, I, oops. I, and I start counting bodies in front of the goal. And it's just, you know, there's a body here, there's a body here, there's a body here, there's a body here, there's a body out here, there's a body out here. And that one picture uh, that I have on my computer, I, I didn't know where, where it came from, some of European games, okay. There were eight bodies in front of the goal on the extra man, not counting the person shooting, you know, and so, the whole concept, the, the thing I want to do is to get rid of some of those bodies. And so, this, so I'm going to play a 3 3 instead of a 4 2. A 3 3 immediately gets rid of two bodies. Well, uh, one body, one of your own bodies, right? So, uh, so now you're, you're, going to, you're going to go into, you're going into 3 3. First of all, it's easier to get into. And I would just, I would go into it immediately. Okay? Uh, and I wouldn't say, okay, Joe, if you're playing over here, you have to go over here to this position because we don't want you out here on top. You know, every, every, you know, it depends on what kind of players you have. But if you feel that you have six fairly decent players, they can play. All six can play any one of these positions. You know, if you have a lefty, of course, they want to be over on the right side over here. But for the most part, you can go into it a lot faster. You don't want to waste time setting it up. We only have 20 seconds. And this is another reason why uh, the extra man has, uh, the percentages have gone down. It's because it's, it used to be a 45 second kick out, then it was a 35 second kick out, and now it's down to 20 second kick out. So you don't have a lot of time to set it up. And then we waste time by going into position, we waste time by passing, holding the ball and faking it and faking it. And you're running, you simply run out of time. And that, you see so many people taking shots with one or two seconds left, the man is coming in from the corner. So, and then you got too many people in the way. So immediately, again, this is the, the first strike I talked about. Exclusion. If, if exclusion is anywhere in, hit, in this area in front of the goal, look for the quick shot. Look for the quick shot. If it's, if it's a half court or it's out here on the perimeter, you might not be able to do it. But just, you know, it, it's certainly a possibility. Uh, so, it, and you got to teach your players to look for it. And if, it's, if there's any chance that it is a, a, I want them shooting. Again, you have to encourage that. You have to encourage them to shoot, and you can't get angry with them if they shoot early like that. Okay, so it's something you have to accept as a coach. It's okay to do. Again, the benefits are going to far away, outweigh. I swear you're going to score more just on doing that than if you wait till the end of the shot or the end of the 20 seconds to take your shot. Okay, so let's say you look for it, it's not there uh, right away. So you start, you start passing the ball. The first thing, uh, even before I take the shot, if there's an exclusion, if there's exclusion at two meters, okay, exclusion at two meters, or, or a post-up player that's in front of the goal, uh, that person's going out, I want the, the person in front of the goal to go to a post. Immediately go to a post. Now, this is going to clear the area, so we have two options here. Let's say the, the kickout was here. Uh, wait a minute, I just said the kickout was over here. Oh, yeah, the kick out is, if the kickout is here, wait a minute, what am I trying to say here? Okay, the kickout's here in two meters, the ball's over here, this person can go to the post, they're supposed to, the referee's supposed to wait for a second or two, call out the number, and then put the ball in play. But in the meantime, there's no reason why this player can't go to a post. Uh, and the ball's here, there's a possibility right there of a pass to the post. Okay? And that should fall into the, the, the rules where the referee has to hesitate. You can't, everyone used to be able to go directly to the two meters in that situation. Now you have to wait a couple seconds. But at least while they're moving, there's a chance you could go there. Okay? So what, what are all the defenders doing? The defenders are all dropping back. They kick out here, person moves to the post, the defenders are swimming back, they're moving back. This defender here in the corner will probably pick up that post player. Uh, but the defender is turning around and swinging back. They're going to go back into their zone. While they're going back into the zone, any one of these players can take the shot. 
Okay? Any one of those players can take the shot. So in fact, even the goalie is, you know, once you make that move to the post like that, the goalie's gonna move over that way too. The goalie will probably follow that player. And so the goalie's gonna be over here. So now you've got this side of the goal is open. And in fact, you've got this whole, that whole section of the goal open, the player on the post. So here's where your early shot's gonna go. Your early shot's gonna be one pass, boom, shoot it to that side, okay? And it really makes it easy if the person that you're shooting against here is swimming back and does, it hasn't stopped and put their arms up. So that's why it's gotta be quick. Pass, one pass for the shot while they're swimming. So uh, this is your early, early strike. I really believe you can score uh, a high percentage just by doing this alone. But again, it has to be, there has to be a, a shooting opportunity. If the, if the defense has already got their arms up and they're already back, then start passing the ball. And pass the ball with no fakes, just a look, a look just a catch, look, pass. Catch, look, pass, catch, shoot. Shoot off the pass. If you teach your kids any skill on six on five, the, the most important skill is catch and shoot off the pass. You know, uh, <laughs> fakes, fakes are overrated. Uh, I think they really are overrated, uh, and most it's people don't face anyway. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do you think any teams will have um, majority of the defense just drop back? Because I mean, they're, the kids are used to dropping back. So, let's say, um, let's say our kids are you know having a brain fart and they don't get the shot right away, yeah. they miss that opportunity. So, you still have a sick, you still have a possession to yeah. take care of. So, do you think a lot of teams will have majority of teams continue to drop back? So just like the regular offense, where we're still looking for a catch and shoot, if the entire team drop back, so yeah, on. Guess, you know, um, really, um, when you think about it, on extra man, uh, the defense is in a complete zone. You know, they're all back yeah, sit on a so on four two. They're all back in a zone. Yeah, and, uh, well, and you know, the teams don't know how to defend the three three anyway. Yeah. So if you just stay in the three three, they're going to collapse back trying to, in a defense that's intended to defend the four two probably. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're probably going to have three to five seconds in there. As their coach is screaming at them, it's a three-three. Stand yeah, up top, yeah, press low. Right. So I mean, I think even if you miss that quick, you're still going to have some catch and shoots before yeah. they get into splitting and everything. Exactly. Else. Yeah. Now, the, another thing you can do is move this post player around. Uh, wherever the kick out is, the post player makes a move. Maybe, maybe you move to this spot over here instead of the two. You move to the three post. Now you're over here. The ball, the ball's here. It gets passed over here. It gets passed over here. The ball gets passed here. If the ball gets past here, or even here, any one of these three spots, this spot here, this spot here, this spot here, that post player can move. Doesn't they don't have to swim? You can you can be on that. You can be on that. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm on this post right here, like this, and uh, the ball gets passed over this, and I just I just I just start moving. I just skull backwards, but I'm staying in a vertical position, and I've got my hand is ready, and as soon that they could pass me the drive pass right there. As I'm moving, because a lot of the defender, most of the defenders are watching the ball. Okay, and if that postman will move, and you, you can start over here and move in the other direction, move in the other direction, you can always get this kind of a shot. But there's any time during while you're moving from one post to the other, you know, you're you're uh, there's a chance you can throw the ball to something. Yeah, like if from this side over here, you could throw it to the postman for the inside shot like this. Uh, so. But generally, the post player would move away from the ball, so the ball is yeah. to the side. Yeah, of the yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but that's that movement there. Uh, Stanford had a four-two uh, in the NC two just recently. They had the, the three post, and uh, all she did was just move to the center. She just went, just moved to the center, passed, goal. They got a goal out of that. Just a very simple move, and that was on, in a four-two. In the three-three, it will really work because that, you know. The defenders, again, you take advantage of the defender who's not looking at you, and most defenders are going to watch the ball. And like if I'm on this post here, this defender, and I don't know where the other defender will be in here somewhere, they will be watching the ball. Uh, if this defender is back, then the other defender, the middle defender, may be over here. If that's the case, then you just have to move to this area right here. When they, everybody turns and looks at the ball, and boom, you got that pass for a shot. It's all reading, reading the defense, and, and moving around. Um, now, uh, 
there are several defenses that teams will use against the 3-3, uh, and I, I'm seeing it now in, the, in Australia uh, when they, uh, they're playing five on five, uh, anticipating the new rule changes, which they may not come, so I don't know why they're doing it so early, but they are. They're, uh, uh, junior national championships, they're 20 and under national championships, they're doing five on five. But so it's a 3-2, they're playing a 3-2, uh, and uh, some teams will bring defenders into the goal. Yeah, and so, uh, in fact, I saw this at the NC2A just recently for the women, they bring defenders into the goal. And uh, I, I don't know who did it against Stanford, I'm not sure, it might have been SC, I know does that sometimes. SC will do this with the men, they bring defenders into the goal. And Mari Bates was bringing some players yeah. player into the field all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and uh, Salinas, uh, Gary Fred Rowe. Yeah, yeah, Gary is yeah. Monterey Bay, yeah. Yeah, Monterey Bay, yeah, yeah. he does that a long time. Monterey. They bring, but you know, you can take advantage of that. That's a field player. He's only got one arm. You know, in the old days where everybody could put both arms and you yeah. could have five people inside the goal, you know, and do that, then you could stop a lot of things. But you know, and the way, the way Stanford beat that is they just, they threw the ball right here, to this person right here. Either that or she popped out just a little bit, right in this area right here. And the pass came right here and shot right at, right between uh, the defender, or they shot over the defender's right shoulder or the left shoulder, whichever shoulder, you know, whichever hand was up, they'd shoot the opposite side. They shoot right next to the head, next to the ear, right. Right. and believe me, that defender is, they're not goalies, you know, they're gonna be like this, <laughs> and th that shot's gonna go. You gotta shoot it from in close. I think, and that's the way, you, you could also shoot it low under the arms, because they're all, the two defenders like that, and the goalie's got the hands up like this, so you can shoot under the arms too. But if you're too close, it's hard to go under the arms. You want to be maybe this close where you just pop out just a little bit at the three. Uh, and this, Stanford did it with this, the three player on their extra man. You could probably do it with the two player too, but I just, I'd like that little short pass and, and then that, that shot. Because if they're inside the, inside the goal, there's nobody out here guarding that player. The only person that's guarding the player is the one that's uh, the defender that's out here. Uh, this is on 4-2. Uh, so, um, now again, 3-3 three, three, if they do this, then you, you, you could even, in that situation, you could move uh, this middle defender to this post. I mean, middle player. Uh, you could move to either post. You could have that person shoot the ball. You could even move them in the middle and leave them there and just, if they're playing that kind of defense. Put that person in the middle. Now you can shoot it here. You can shoot it here, shoot wherever you want. But, but in the, I saw uh, Gary Figueroa use that at Salinas High School in the uh, CCS championships up there. And teams were teams would get the ball and shoot from outside. They shoot it right at the goalkeeper. They never shot at that. He bring he bring one person in, mm -hmm. one defender in, and nobody shot at the defender. I mean that's the weakest person out there, you know. So that can be beat. Uh, another thing uh, that. Teams will do, most of the time, uh, when you're in a 3-3, they're gonna have the defenders, uh, they're gonna have the defenders like that, back here, okay? So in that situation, if your uh, post player is on the post, you've got this whole side of the goal to shoot at. So if I'm right here, here's my best shooter right here. This is my best opportunity is that middle person. Because you can shoot, you don't have to, I mean, if this defender here comes over to get in front of you, and that leaves that one open. If this defender over here moves over to get in front of you, that leaves the player the shooting from over here open. And so uh, if they stay like that, this shooter here has that, has that, has that, and shoot just about anywhere. So, and th this whole part of the cave, depending on where the middle defender is, but it, you, middle defender will probably stay on the post. So you've got a whole side of the goal to shoot at. And this is the person that you would like to shoot the ball more than anything. And again, catch and shoot from there. You don't have, you don't have any, all you have to do is beat the goalie. That's pretty much it. You gotta beat the goalie. Because uh, this defender, in a 3-2 like this, um, I mean, I, we even do this on a 4-2. We try to move our two outside players shift them right or left so we can have somebody in the center like that. It just creates a better shot for you. But uh, the key here is to clear the goal and allow that shot to go. Your percentage is gonna go up on that alone. 
you're going to have much higher uh, percentage shots. Now, if the if the defense and uh, in the old days when we used to do a, a three three, uh, we stopped three three a lot because we defenders would go out there like that. They play in the gaps, and if you shot, you missed. They would be gone on the counterattack. So they're down a man. All of a sudden, they take off on the counterattack and be up a, a man in the other direction. So uh, this is one maybe one reason. And four two. You had a, a few more opportunities to score. You had two post people. Any any one of six people could score. In the three three, I think any one of six people could score. I mean, that, that was just kind of the feeling back in those days. But now you don't want to shoot from outside in this situation. If they're out there like that, I would wait. For instance, I put the ball here at the center and have this person throw the ball. Throw the ball over here. Throw the ball over here. What's this defender going to do? I'm a defender out here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this guy's throwing the ball, I'm going to look. As soon as I turn my head to look to see where that ball's going, you drive. Drive to that open area right here. you got this whole area open. Anywhere along here, you can, you can stop. You can stop here. You can stop here. You can stop in the post. Uh, and then that pass is made for the shot. Pass is made here for the shot. Pass made here for the shot. Uh, and you have to decide when to stop, when you think you're the most open. And, and that, again, you've got the whole side of the cage to shoot at there. Uh, if you don't get the ball, if the very worst somebody picks you up, like this person might follow you in, uh, they, they might be, maybe they won't look at you. Again, the timing has to be right here. When the ball's in the air to here, and you have to look at this defender, as soon as they turn their head to look, then you got to go behind them. And, uh, Again, you end up if you do get nothing at all out of this, then you're then you're in a four-two. It's the worst thing that can happen to you is you're back in a four-two, which then you just you, you can run a four-two offense in that situation. But uh, and then you can also now let's say what if your post is over here, and okay, uh, your post player is at the three post, then you're going to drive this person here or this person here. Right? Again, you throw the ball over here, this person could drive there, or you could throw the ball from here to here, and drive into here for a pass and shot. You just drive into this open area right here. Again, if you don't get the ball, you end up in a 4-2 again. So, uh, it's, uh, so, it takes a lot of discipline on that too, because if that wing defender comes off, you, you would still want to hold it for seconds, you can still get a catch and shot maybe from the one of the five. Yeah. And you have to be, uh, and you, uh, there's a lot of space though right there. Yeah, if the person is swimming in, in, you pretty much have to wait till they stop. Yeah. You, you don't want to really do it where they're swimming and, and you know, you could, I guess, if they, if they, if they have the ability to do that, but the, you want them to stop first before. You, you know. can also just attack in straight center from three and then whatever side, the, yeah, whatever side the defense collapses on the side that you would be able to cross back. Because yeah. they go into here. Yeah, and so they're right. either going to collapse on you and you're going to yeah. have a side that you can work to, or yeah. they don't collapse on you and you're wide open at the five yard line, dead yeah. center cage, and you're yeah. forcing just the defense to make decisions. In yeah. yeah. Like, my guess would be if three moved in like that, that that defender over here is going to slide over to help. And then, uh, actually, no, I think the bottom defender would. Excellent. Because if, if, yeah, if, if that person's moving in that aggressively, the post defender can't leave and that defender is the one who's farthest away from the ball. I think most coaches are going to say, hey, yeah. step and help. So you have that long cross pass, catch and shoot. And if the splitting defender steps down, you have both the cross passes as well. Something I did one time too, the same situation, you get the ball to the five side, the one would go across. Yeah. And then that drive, that space is completely good. open on the yeah, two. Yeah, right on that side, yeah. Uh, you know, so the, 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 the whole thing is, is movement. You're, you're creating movement and <clears> you're forcing defense to make decisions. And it depends, uh, remember, remember uh, you guys have probably played this, but uh, a two out, and, and yeah. we used to call it a sucker play. <laughs> we'd, we'd put a, we'd, we'd have the, a player here in the center with the ball, and you got a defender here, you got a defender here, and you have a defender here, right? And you got another player over here, okay? So you move this person over to the center, and this person starts moving out in this open area, okay? And what you want to do is, as this person is moving in, hopefully the guard will be attracted out there, but it doesn't matter. Uh, 
If this guard follows out, then the ball goes here for the shot. If the middle defender follows out, then you've created a three on two over here. You've got uh, two defenders and three offensive players because this guard is not going to be able to shift over there. He's following out here. So then if the middle guard goes out, you throw the ball to this side. If this defender drops back to pick that up, then you got the shot coming from here. So you, you, you have three options depending on what the defenders do. You got three different defenders, they got three different things they can do. And if they don't do anything, then you're going to throw the ball. Actually, you have four options. If the defenders don't pick that person up coming out, uh, then you can throw the person that's popping out the two out position. So, uh, and this is, by the way, also a way to get into the 3 3. You can start at 4 2. We used to do a lot more shifting and moving uh, when there was uh, 35 seconds or 45 seconds, you know, uh, before. But now with only 20 seconds, you don't know, you gotta, sh you gotta shift fast. Now you could, if you, if you called the timeout to set up some kind of a play, maybe it's a critical situation in the game, you wanna set up some kind of a play, you could start in a 4-2. And you could start in a 4-2, now you can go into a 3-3, three, three. Uh, one rotates out, everybody shifts over, six can rotate out, and everybody shifts this way, okay? When one, uh, what I see a lot of, I see one rotating out, but I'll see two staying there. And you're just, you're in, but you're in the way, you know, you're, you're in the way. If I rotate out here, I gotta shoot through you, I gotta shoot through this defender, I gotta shoot through this defender, I got a goalkeeper here, you know, that, that's, that's a pretty hard shot to make. The only thing you have is over here cross cage, maybe. But then, yeah, uh, the goalie, the, unless, if the goalie comes all the way over here, then you really have a cross cage shot. But, uh, so if you're gonna shift like that into a 3-3, three, three, this, this post has to go out. And then, then, you're, then you, you just, and now you're in perfect position. You have a three post, you have this side of the goal completely wide open, okay? Now, if you, want, if you don't want a three post, you want a two post, then, uh, and if you have a left hander, even with a right hander, you can have six move out. Six moves out, shift this way, shift this way, okay? And this three post moves out here, and now, you, now you're left with a two post, and you've got this whole part of the goal to shoot at. So you can go in, but you gotta do this quickly, you gotta do it right away, and you can only do it after a timeout. If you have already, taken five or six or seven seconds just to set up, and then you do a shift and uh, after a couple of passes, uh, now you're getting running out of time. The shift takes time to, to do. So but if you call it, if you have a timeout, you have a full 20 seconds to do your shift if you want to do some kind of a shift. The, one more on it. Uh, and you can do the two out into a three three or the three out into a three three. Same thing. Uh, again, you move these two players here in a 4-2, you move these players that way, pop out, if you can get the balls are popping out, or if they come out, they come out into a 3-3, so you, you, you end up in a 3-3. And again, you end up with that side of the goal wide open, or you could do a three out with a left-hander, if you had a left-hander, you'd go a three out, and you would leave the other side of the goal wide open. So it's just the ways to get into it. But again, I would do it after a timeout. I was going to say, a big play that we're seeing now a lot of is when it gets swung down to the six, and they're popping the, the two out on that. Balls here? Either, six either, in, yeah, five Either from a six two. in. Oh, six in, yeah. Either, either from a six in or even not. They're just getting the ball down there, and then that two post is popping out into a three, three. And it confuses on the fly when you're in that four, two base package defense, and it rotate into a three, three, and that two is almost always open. And I'm always screaming at my, my guys just to recognize the, the, the split. Yeah. But. Well, what we used to do on the six in is two would go in. Yeah. yeah and then we'd throw that inside pass. But now uh, they're, they're yeah, on the six this in with the rotation. Yeah. They keep popping out, and then everyone else is just rotating. So it's six and in, five rotating. wide, four center, two yeah. pop. Yeah. Right. And, and a lot the, of teams are running this now. And then that guy at the, at the, the two popping, if, if, if the kids don't, don't recognize it early, and at the 16 level, uh, you know, a lot of times they, they don't recognize it in time. What, There's what, a wide open pass to two, he's getting that ball and whatever ripping it in. Right. So. What is one, does one go in? Yeah. yeah. One goes in? No, one just sits back. One just stays. Yeah. One could go they in. They find the pocket if two is covered. 
Yeah. If, I mean, if, if, you, if, you, if the X1 comes out to him, then yeah, I would say yeah. if, it, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it's 6, so it would still be running. If the X1 falls out, they're in here, one goes in, you can throw that long one too. I'm just saying that this rotation right now is very popular. Yeah. I don't see a whole lot anymore of the pass from like the four stepping middle with that two pop and the over the pop yeah. pass. I don't see that much except at the international level. Now everything is the six in, two pop two out. Pop out. Okay. Okay. a lot. If you bring a defender that's guarding a person who's going five wide, and you bring that person back. I always bring yes. Yeah, yes. because then because that person's really just a decoy trying to pull defense. Yeah, exactly. five wide is your where's your weakest shooter. Yeah. Five wide is your weakest yeah. shooter. You got four in the center, so now you're saying the defender should shift this way, so it's a counter yeah, shift. Yeah, counter. The guy's got to shift. This over person comes over here there. and picks that up that. And then the you essentially just go three yeah. or you know you all pressed up down. Yeah, and that's probably the best way to defend. But the problem is a lot of times. Young kids, you know, when this rotation happens, they get hung up, and the two just sitting there wide yeah, open. Yeah, you get the ball, and they're like two guys, not sure, and they want to stun him. He just has an easy shot from about like four meters away from a yeah. good spot. Yeah. Yeah. This. Uh, it's it's amazing how when five goes wide like that, the, the defender will fall. Yeah. Out. Right. It drives me yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, especially if it's a right hander, and they really take it. I, that's why I always used to. I always like to do uh, one ends. Because it, the, they would shift this way, mm -hmm. and at least this the, the four player is wide in the goal too. But at least it's a right hander shooting like this instead of shooting from the, from the wrong side. So I, I did a lot of one ends too. Uh, uh, I should have got one. Yeah. What? Um, yeah, people left right here. Or, on, on defense, what's uh, most teams are, are still just doing arms, hands up, are they doing much knocking down at all? Uh, yep. Um, I've got a Serbian who's their under 14 coach. He right. loves doing this. Oh, man. Uh, get a ball. What's that? Get a ball. Get a ball. Get a ball. Get a ball. <laughs> if, if the player fumbles it at all, or yeah. if he looks off for a second, you're, you're knocking it down and, yeah. and you're back. So it's 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 not like a, like a like a typical storm, but he's just doing a lot of press the ball on his uh, uh, about five and six. And it's effective at like that at at, yeah. at, at out level, even at the 16 level. Once you get to 18s, and kids are a little bit more savvy and calm with the ball. Right. I think if you if you come out a lot and if you have a patient player with okay. the ball, they're gonna find an open lane. I, I guess in the college level, but I was just in some back in the zone because you can't really yeah. knock guys down. Uh, we knock down two players, two players down. sometimes, but you you have to have players that can really move in and out, yeah. and that's what Spain used to do. This. I love to watch Spain. They're so quick. They could move so between players so so well, and they would just kill a lot of six on five just by doing that. But you know, one thing we used to look for too. The ball's at one here. Any pass from one to a right-hander here, a right-hander has to catch a cross face. So if you're this defender, first of all, if the ball's at one, this defender here doesn't have to be that on two. All right, so this defender is kind of cheating out halfway. When that passes, if that pass is made there, you, you got two strokes for your right there. They have to catch the ball, bring it back, you know. So uh, that's a good time to do it. A lot of teams don't like to pass the ball in that direction. You better start at this side and go this way and then go back over. I always hate that pass. I get all my kids every time. Which one? The okay, the one yeah. to the four, yeah, the right. five, and the six. I'm like, why what, what are you doing? It doesn't accomplish anything. Yeah. You just go in from station to station cross space, you know. Let's like, go to the five. Here's your, yeah, right? two, <laughs> drives me crazy. Here's your two most dangerous passes. Six to four and one to five. Yeah. Because there's a defender right there. And if you don't throw it high enough, then uh, that's going to get intercepted. And the most meaningless pass in water pool is the four to the five on a six on five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And, and Mike keeps it all the time. I'm just like, here you go. It's like, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, you know what, what, I, what I like to do is... The only thing that has to move in the goalie is eyes, right? <laughs> all right. All right. I like to shift four and five. So maybe that's four in the center here. Maybe five is wide. So it's a it. four <laughs> has the ball, pass the five, and then pass back. So pass over here, pass right back, and shot. Yeah, that works too. And it, even if you're shifting the other way, you can do that with, with this player that's shifted out here. And, and you've got five and four. And it's a, here, this person's in the middle now. Pass over here, pass back for the shot. This is a very simple con concept, but it works. It really does work. Uh, that, um, anything else I can think of on the, the other rotations? I think that I'm seeing it more and more now, uh, an early shot on a six on five. I 
mean, uh, we always, all these years, always said, wait, 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 wait for the good shot. You know, pass the ball, move the ball, set the goalie, move the ball, set the goalie. You know, uh, fake, fake, fake. And now I'm seeing uh, more teams are taking that early shot. And every time I see an early shot, it goes in. <laughs> you know, so uh, it, and it's, there's no guarantee it's going to go in. But I think your chances are, are better early in the six on five. It really is. The other one that just kills you sometimes is the person swimming in and the defense kind of relaxes a little bit and boom, you take the shot and scores when the person's coming in from the corner. Well, I think the zones, the five-man zones that people play have gotten a lot better too. Yeah. I mean, because kids, because players are playing more zone to begin with, yeah. they're better at playing the five-man zones yeah. that they're asked to play. I mean, there was a, a video this year for the JP men's team. We take it from the uh, you know the tall diving board. Yeah. It was, so the, it was right by the play. The six on five was diving right underneath the diving board. Oh, so yeah. it was a great overhead view. And I, I I saved it and you know I I've been showing it to different teams and stuff because um, you can see the five man defense yeah. moving so well in unison and taking shots. I mean it's a, it's a really good it's one good possession of five man defense where. They move so quickly with the ball yeah. on their legs, getting into their shot blocking positions that it's really difficult to find an open shot. What, what I saw at the high school level up in Northern California is the corner defenders mm -hmm. really didn't know what to do. And this is the common mistake you see all the time. The ball gets past the one here. Instead of uh, this person here would come out straight out, you know, yeah. instead of coming back and taking away, shot. Take away that corner. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, and we used to see this all the time in Northern California. I think teams are not doing this too much anymore, but you know, that yeah, concept yeah. of coming back. Still do it, don't worry, Don. <laughs> still see it? Yeah, yeah. still do it all yeah. the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, uh, what they're doing at the, at the college level and, and in Europe is that they're coming back right hand first with a quick shot and then left hand. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. Yeah. So that's the new ODP again. Back to the ODP stuff, that's the new shot blocking. I mean, two or three years ago, it was, it was you know, everything was, it was static walking out. Now it's the rollover and then the knockdown. So that's what they're teaching them. How do they do when you go out like this, you mean? Yeah, just yeah. In, a, in, a, in a physical zone defense, even. Yeah. Like if you're playing X2, well, I should, I should say, if, you, if you're playing like, yeah, um, X2, you are, you are, you are, you are uh, rolling out with your right hand. And then coming down to get the left hand up. The idea is to take away the shot. quick shot. You're actually in the middle defender here? I'm just saying, on, it, it, on it, 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 so, yeah. We're teaching, like, Von Hips, and he's got the ball. As I go out to field block, I come here to here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. take away the quick shot but, and then come out. A lot of this, some of this yeah. stuff comes from uh, Dion, the new yeah. Yeah. Yes. coach. Yeah. He's, he's really big on this. Uh, you're, you're on the post and then going from there. So you're saying that you pull with this hand and then come up with this hand, is that how you actually, actually comes out with, it with, with, with one hand, so it's a, So you it's explode a, out with this a, hand? A, right. Shot block with this side, and then you will rotate around your hand. And then come yeah. down, yeah. Shot shot block, and, and then, then you're down. knocking down the shoot, yeah. is what you're doing. But they're not, even on that shot block, like if, if this is the post that I'm stepping to, they're not teaching coming over my hips and stepping here. Yeah. They're teaching you to step like this, and then take that hand. Because the thinking is, the shooters are being taught to shoot that that roof skip shot. Right. So you're going to put your hand out here to take the skip shot away, yeah. and then rotate into the hand up. It's and, you're, like, and you're still matching hands. So yeah. At the end, you're yeah. That, that, uh, yeah. To me, the low shot. Um, when you're playing a four-two, uh, the low it's shot is a much higher percentage shot than a high shot. It just it's, you're going to hit invariably. You're going to hit arms when you're shooting high. And but you know, there's not a lot of rope. You've got about two kind of little shooting lanes you can, on the four two. You know, uh, let's say you're out here. I mean, you've got you got a defender, a defender, a defender here, a defender here, and a defender here. And you got the goalie here. So, well, I'd say this. You know, you've got you kind of got low here underneath the arms, and you kind of well go to this side. It's pretty hard to do. You pretty much. It's kind of like one lane that you have that's going to be kind of open. And, uh, and this is what the Europeans are so good at. Uh, they're finding that, uh, that shooting lane, and, and they're going cross cage, and they're going low. and they're Skips just, through like three hands. Yeah, 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 yeah that's amazing. That's the best thing is to watch those, those international game replays and see the, the shooting those guys are able yeah. to do. 
Yeah, and this kind of amazing when you see the way they shoot. That's the difference between U.S. water polo and European water polo. And you know, uh, they're shooting over the, uh, like if you have this hand, or if you have this hand up, they're shooting over this shoulder. Yes. And they're shooting and near the head too, right up in this area, right in here. Right, right here. And, yeah. So, but they, they're, just, they're just beautiful. Yeah, yeah this is cool. Well, the other thing, I don't know if you guys see this, but at the collegiate level, there's not a single goalie that keeps their hands in the hand on the six on five anymore. No. Yeah. Every goalie's hands out the entire time on the six on five that I play against. It's yeah, it's like, like drives me crazy. Yeah. It's like it's just it's just one more thing. So all those lanes that you talked about, that's their hope to take it away so that you have one lane and that's not it. The other thing the goalie does too, ball's over here. Here's a defender here taking that part of the of the, the shot away here. The goalie moves over and gets behind the defender. And you know, and instead of covering this part of the case, they don't, they, the goalie's got to depend on the defender to make that stop because you, you can't cover the whole case. And it, if, if I see a goalie, if I'm at one and I see a goalie doing that, then I'm going cross cage every single time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, anything else on? Well, I, I, I really think, yeah, uh, I don't know how many of you uh, play a 3 3. Give it a try, see how it works. I, I, I think it's going to increase your shooting percentage. Six on five, especially if you move that middle player to a post. Yeah, that's, I never really thought of that. I just, yeah, yeah three, 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 thinking yeah, about yeah. moving him left and right. And you know, I, me too. We've always put this uh, three three. You put the person in the center of the goal. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I've been thinking about this for quite a while. And six, especially in six on five. And then, uh, and then in the front court, you've got that two meter player right in the center. Why not? Why not move? If you're going to play a two meter offense, move the two meter man to a post. It's just going to open up so many. I mean, you know, it definitely makes sense because if they're going to wrap into a 3-3 on, on the defense, they're going to split those top two. Right. And, you, and you get that ball down towards like the six or, or, the, or the five, and it shifts, you have a lot more of a ball side lane than even from that four position sure. across. Yeah, so. sure. On a six on five with movement, I mean, there's no way that five men can defend the movement of the ball and the movement of yeah, players. Exactly. And that's what's yeah. different about this. Yeah. The six on five so much, even though there is shifting, yeah. it's not movement. That's right. With this type of movement, they have to, you can defend the movement of the ball or you can defend the movement of the players. You can't, but defend, both. You can't defend both. Eventually, somebody's going to be out of position yeah. some way. Yeah. And, and then all you got to do is teach your players to read that. Yeah. <laughs> Find an open guy, right? Yeah, hoping, hoping they see it, right? Just somebody wide open in front of the goal. I started, te yeah, I started teaching this this year. Um, three, a three three. three? Kids. Yeah, right. but I did a three three transition in, into a four two. Yeah. So yeah. like, cause I have a lot of like first year players. So like, and six on five to me is like the most. From getting from the regular offense into a four two one six, that's like the hardest thing for the kids to yeah. get. Yeah. Like, that you don't understand, you know, like, do I have to go here? I was supposed to go here? I thought I was supposed to go here. So, uh, how so did you know, have to stay in the 3-3, three, three, yeah. have some, and I had somebody drive through, and if they're, if they're open, right, then you pop up, or can't shoot. If you work, go to the post, we're in a 4-2. It's that simple, you know. It's kind of like that the easiest thing. Kind of like what I did up here. Yeah, you exactly. go in the 3-3, three, three, you go into that right, post. Right, so I just did it. I'm going to stick with more of staying in the 3-3 three, three this year, moving, moving forward. Well, the 3-3 right. three, three is definitely easier to set up. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and I don't, you know, it depends. Like I say, if you've got one great shooter and the other five can't shoot at all, then yeah. you, you're going to have to put your best shooter out on top somewhere. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know, if you've got six fairly equal players, they can play any of those six positions, you know, and, uh, and, and they go straight to them without having to, like, if, you know, my one player is over here in this part of the pool and i got to swim all the way over here, and, you know, to go to the one position. I mean, uh, I, have, I have never seen Bonani play anything but one. Yeah, in all this year. Yeah. I mean, just just for the sake of of mixing things up, I would maybe move them around a little bit once in a while, you know, because and uh, Churnside's always at four, and Bowen's always at five. And <laughs> those three guys are in those three positions. That's my spot, coach. Yeah, yeah. I know that's <laughs> what I play. They're very effective for me, yeah, but, I mean. but still, after a while, you you know what's coming from there. You know, but only takes. The same shot. He, it's a great shot. He yeah. takes side skip he has, time, right? So. He has that little wrap around yeah. near side wrap around. Yeah. I think that was our problem at the last Olympics in our six on five too. I think that all the other European teams, all the teams we played, were really wise to what we were doing, which was shifting over and get trying to get Tony in the yeah, center yeah. for that catch yeah. and shoot. Yeah. And Tony didn't score any six on fives yeah. in that Olympics because everybody knew Everybody's gonna that's the shot we're going for. Yeah. That's yeah. the offense we're trying to run. I mean, it's funny when when. Uh, when Tony was at Stanford, I had him for one year, 
and then uh, they, and then he played for three more years after that. And uh, Barks actually used to move him around. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't put him at one or, or four all the time. And uh, and then but now with Manani, he, he he's always at one. He just always plays that one position. Uh, and Manani capable of playing somewhere else too, and he could be just very effective from there too. But just you play. I mean, you're playing these teams. You play them over and over and over again. They know each other so well. They know exactly where Bonani's going to shoot. They know, you know, they know exactly where Bowen's going to shoot. I swear, Bowen, he's just changed recently. Yeah. But if for the first three years he was Stanford, he always shot from five position. He always shot uh, high to uh, near side. Near side. Yeah. He got right up here. Yeah. He always shoot right up there yeah. every single time. Yeah. You know? and, and from here, for a right hander from five. That's a pretty good shot, yeah. but then everybody started figuring out he's always shooting there. Now, uh, and I don't know if it's because he, he was on the national team and the coach told him to start shooting other places, he's starting to shoot more cross cage and stuff like that too. Yeah. He's The thing about Bowen is he doesn't have to wind up. He's got that good, yeah, quick release, it's good. just from here. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it catch, it's in there, and it's a hard shot, but without a wind up. So. Yeah, his dad, you know, He's from Santana High School, where oh, I'm yeah. at, yeah. and, I, and my son actually swam with him when they were 10, 11. And so, yeah. But his dad, even when high, in high school, would move him everywhere because yeah. he'd been two-meter set or he'd put him out tight. And even when we played the survive tournament one year, he'd come up, it, it, the teams were coming out and watching him, and he was picking the ball up just like this from nine meters and just yeah. ripping it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very few guys could do that. Yeah. Yeah. At the international yeah. level, it seems like uh, like the U.S. team, I mean, every shot comes from the top, the four uh, positions on the 4-2. Yeah. And they will sometimes try and force into, like, Bailey when he's playing the two or something. If you watch, like, Serbia and you watch the Croats, they will, there is no entry pass on, on, on those posts that is, you know, taboo. I mean, they will throw whatever. Sure. Anyway. They will throw, you know, a, like, a left hand in the three post from the stick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Sure. I mean, they, yeah. they, they are, they are, they are, they're, they are this, so much this crap. Here, they're, they're so great at this one. They are, they are, they're, 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 they're so much crap here that yeah. they use that to where you, you don't lock up on their, on their shooters. Yeah. And then they'll have a wide open, quick passing lane yeah. and they're shot blocking and they, and they can't defend those little quick entries. Yeah. And we don't do that at the U.S. level. I mean, no. Even in high school, well, everything no. is a six in to that three or to that, you know, or, or the, the two or three. That there's not a whole lot of defensive post pass. Well, you know, the difference too is that our big guys don't have as good legs as Europeans. Yeah. Our big are guys are big. Yeah. Like Bailey's big, and yeah. he's a center, and he does a great job at center. But he's very low in the water. And when uh, those Europeans, those big, great, big two meter players, for new, they play on the post. I mean, they're they're really up high, and so you put that ball up to them, and they can and the magic hands, they can do right. anything. Right, they good. Yeah, yeah. I love to watch those European games, it, and the shooting is really the difference. I mean, it is it, when you when you look at it. Uh, and the thing that gets me is we've always been a swimming country, and we never emphasized the counterattack. I was I actually talked to Tony Azevedo about it one time. I said, Tony, all these years he's been on the national team, he said we never worked on the counter, and the U.S. is the best swimming country. We're we're faster than all of countries, but we never worked on the counter. Rudich, I was, I was there with Rudich for one year. He, he did all that swimming. Uh, back in the first year of the four-year cycle, he only did uh, 8,000 a, a, a day. <laughs> but then he, the year before the Olympics, he got up to 15,000 a day. But um, never worked on the counter. He drew it up on the board one time. It was kind of like that lane thing that Guy Baker had with the ODP. You know, you have the lanes and, and the numbers. Uh, he, uh, and he kind of had a feel like that, and then after that, they never worked on it. They never, they never really countered. They did a lot of front court, uh, and he taught a heavy game. He, that's where the heavy game came from. That really hard foul, and uh, he, his his idea was every time you foul, you foul every time. There's no question, no none of this, no fouling. You foul every time, and you foul hard. You come down on the guy hard, and uh, he was talking to, to the U.S. players, and uh, Ricardo was also coaching. Uh, he was, he, Ricardo was standing over there, and I was standing over here, and here's Rudy talking to the players. And so he says, I want you, you must, you must do foul hard. You must do foul hard. And he's like this, and he turns over to me, and he goes, boom, you know, got him on off my feet, you know, and he's a, he's a pretty strong, big guy, you know. And, but that's what he wanted. And, that game was accepted because they won a gold medal when he was with Italy. And so all the referees uh, didn't call that. 
And so they, they finally passed the rule that that hard following perimeter has to be called an exclusion. But before that, everybody just followed what Rudish did. And they, they allowed that, you know. So it was, that, the game really got ugly during that time. And that was the ugliest period of, of water polo, is when guys were just, this, and they, you still see a lot of deliberate fouls on the outside. And I, that's one thing I don't understand, is, is why you would deliberately foul uh, to stop the clock and give the guy a free pass, you know. Uh, and you still see it, you still see it a lot. You know? I, I, uh, I don't want any fouls on the perimeter unless the referee calls one, you know, that, uh, that, that isn't really there. Okay, well, um, we, uh, it's 10.25, uh, we'll take a short break and then maybe start at 11 again, is that, and then we can get up, maybe get out a little earlier, yeah.